Okay, let's see how this is working. Is this still... That's ah, a little off. Sorry. It's going to be very out of focus here. That is because I'm trying to get this so that when I'm painting something, which I'll probably be holding about here, uh, it will hopefully be in focus. So if I hold something... To find a spot where I can actually... Ooh, I don't really like that. Can I bring you... One sec. Can I bring you down a little and over to about here? I gotta find a spot where I'm gonna be able to hold my mini. Where you're gonna be able to see it. And I'm gonna be able to see it. Camera's gonna be able to see it. I can still have my hand... Yeah, if I'm holding it about here, you should be able to see more or less what's going on, right? Uh, I would need to bring it to... I think I want it about here. Let me see if I can get my focus set in to that. If I go into here and I configure video... Shimmy that off to the side for a second. And I get my focus set to... That's worse. That should be about right. Okay, so about 32 should give me what I need. All right, beautiful. Hopefully that will just stay where it is and should be fine. And pardon any any mess on on this general region of the desk. It's mostly like there's there's a million paints paints and stuff hanging out over here um if for, for what you're going to be seeing this is the first time i'm trying to do like a live painting thing like this so this is kind of a test setup of if this camera arrangement works um if you see me going like off this way that that sort of a direction is where my paint palette lives uh, i've got some fresh water here for dipping my paint brushes into i'm going to try to be painting in this sort of a region here um and then so one sec, where is my chat window living at the moment? Chat's living over there. If chat's living over there, let's move. We're gonna we're gonna shimmy you guys over a little bit. We'll shimmy you guys over to about there. Does that does that put chat? Yeah, chat should be fully on screen there. Alright, beautiful. So you guys should have a spot to live over on the left there. Let's just make sure that's working. Hello, everyone. Boom, okay, that's working good. But yeah, um, I just wanted to start working on some of my Tomb Kings. I bought a whole, the whole starter box of Tomb Kings stuff. There is, frankly, an absurd amount of Tomb Kings in that box. There's, I think, just shy of 100 skeletons. So, should be set up for quite a bit of painting. I did a color test. Um, the other day just to see how I like how they look and this was the result of that uh, this fellow right here and I'm pretty happy with how that turned out like I haven't like gone in and done any edge highlighting or anything fancy this is like each of these colors you're seeing here was one coat of paint like this was this was very quick and simple uh, and for honestly most of the foot soldiers that's probably about as in depth as they're going to be getting just because I don't have the time it would take to spend you know ages edge highlighting and picking out every little detail and all of them but honestly I think this guy looks pretty good for only only having like one coat of paint per color on him like this only took like I don't know 10-15 minutes to do uh, maybe a little bit longer with like putting the color on the base whatever and I'm gonna end up basing it more more detailed than this I just kind of put some tan on there so I could, I'm gonna do sand as the base, and I wanted to see what that was going to look like. So, let's start. Where do I want to begin? One second here. I need to also try and make sure I don't bump my camera. I currently have my camera on my swing stand for my mic. And it's not, like, particularly well secured on there. So, there's a, there's a chance that might drift a little bit. Um... We'll see. If it does, we'll just try to swing it back. I don't have a way to, like, save that position <laughs> uh, in real life. So that's going to be a little fun. But yeah, I have 
um, quite a few of these that I need to paint still. I uh, primed them the other day. It was really windy and cold out that day. It was like negative something. Like it was like just below freezing, negative in Celsius, um, and super windy. So the primer spattered a little bit, and it left a couple of pools on there, which is not ideal, but it'll be fine. We're painting over all of it anyway. It's not going to matter too, too much. Paint time indeed. But yes, I am. I have got many, many skeletons to paint. Um, so there's like a box of them down kind of next to me here. I'm going to probably leave them in the boxes so that I don't like bump them with my wrist and completely dismantle them. I would like to find, however, I know some of these guys have a different shield that has more, more decoration on it. And I would like to find one of the ones with the fancier shield if I could. Um, you'll have one. Because you're like the fancy guy, right? This is like my my squad leader. Uh, this isn't actually all that fancy. Oh god, can we get this to, to not be quite so blown out? Oh no. The white skeletons might be a little saturated. Okay, one sec. We might need to change webcam settings a little bit here. Because apparently white skeletons are going to show up extremely vibrant. Uh, if I choose this... a little better let's leave that there and then go into my camera settings real quick and see if I can get this knocked in okay Arax wait what? what does that mean my brain my brain hears a rack and thinks spider there's not like a spider crawling around in my, in my camera somewhere is there uh, Turn off the auto exposure, and then let me... If we go to like... This is pretty dark, but if we go to there... That on my screen looks about right. If I can go like one up... Does that work? Is that too, too blown out? That looks about right to me. Like, the colors on my screen look to be about the same color as what I'm seeing in front of me. So that should be fine. Um, but yeah, short version of how, I do, how, we're do, how we're doing this for, like, how I'll be painting them. I use black primer. Yeah, black primer, I made the mistake of trying to paint something. One sec, I'll go grab this. I tried to paint something white once with black primer, and it was... Ugh... Oh, uh, it was not fun. <laughs> um, I'll, you know, let me show off a couple of the models I've painted in the past. Screw it. As long as we're doing a painting stream, I'll, I'll brag a little bit. Uh, what, what have we got right nearby? I've got some stuff sitting on top of my, my subwoofer here. Um, I've got this fella, who's not... not most of them aren't based, because I hate basing. But I've got this guy here. Uh, the Adeptus Mechanicus... Whatever... Whatever this is. Uh... I can't remember what the heck the name of this thing is. But yeah, he's pretty cool. I'm happy with him. Um, I've got... This guy here. Uh, can we get his face in focus? Is that not going to be a thing? He does have eyes. Well, one eye. Uh, the other eye is a, a robot eye. So yeah, we've got this fella here. Uh, I kind of went for like the Blood Angels kind of color scheme on him. Pretty happy with how he turned out. Um, we've got this fe oh god how do I where do I where do I bring him to put him in focus got this guy here he's he's pretty fun I am oh god if I rotate like this and then hold it oh I'm having to hold, this is like a 45 degree angle to the floor right now but yeah this guy's pretty fun I want to I have a box of skeletons or skulls, and I want to get the a skull and put it in his hand so he's like holding a skull out in front of him as like a, a spell focus. I think that'd be really fun. So I think I'm gonna go back and do that on him later. I have got the the new Admech Tall Boy. Uh, this is gonna look really dark on camera because it's a pretty dark model, but. Yeah, we've got the, if I rotate you at about a 45 degree angle and then bring you 
there. There we go. And I can just kind of spin this a little bit. I'm pretty happy with him. And let me go get my three, like, good ones. This is going to take just a second. I'm going to set my, uh, my model down here. Oh, I've got this guy here. This was from Blackstone Fortress. This is the uh, Mechanicus Techno-Archaeologist. Uh, it is, was for a long time, one of the hardest AdMech models to get a hold of because it was only available in like a limited edition like board game piece. Um, they did eventually make him available just for sale, uh, but I managed to get a hold of him. Got him painted up. And that's about everything I've got sitting on my desk right now. Let me, I will be right back. I'm going to go grab the, the other three, like, particularly nice ones. And then I'll be back and we can start painting these uh, Tomb Kings. Let me just throw this on here. And I'll throw up a uh, grabbing extra models on there. Okay, be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, let me pop back to here and grab some stuff. I grabbed, like, the most advanced models I've done. Oh, God. Don't break them. It's very difficult to pick up. This guy wants to break, no matter which way you look at him. I've got a Gilliman, the, the leader of the Ultramarines here. I need to finish the flames on the torches. Those aren't done. I was looking at that when I picked them up, and it's like, ah, oh, these aren't, these aren't done at all. Uh, so I need to finish that. But yeah, I've got Gillum in here uh, with some some fuzzy bits on the base. These torches are so fragile. I've broken them like three times each. If you just like lightly tap them when you're picking them up, they just snap right off. So this guy is a real the hand reveal. Yes, I should have. I should have included that in the title. But yeah, I've got Gillum in here. I'm really happy with how he turned out, especially the like. The face, I think, turned out super, super well. Um, 
gotta find a place to set him real quick. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna live there, carefully balanced on top of a pile of of uh, things. Uh, I've got this guy. Uh, he's he's a little bigger. Uh, another another one of my admec guys. I'm again pretty happy with how he all turned out. Overall, I think he's pretty decent. Um, again, you're gonna live haphazardly balanced on top of a pile of stuff over there. I've got when I said I had a model that I primed black, and uh, remind me of Dishonored. Yeah, they kind of do. They look like um. Dowd's uh, assassins. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Um, when I said I had a model that I primed it black, and then I uh, I wanted to do the uh, I, I wanted to paint it white, and it ends up being a massive pain in the ass. Uh, that would be Celestine here. Can I get her to stop wobbling around if I hold her by this bit? There we go. But yeah, I primed this like dark silver. I was like, oh, that'll make the metallic bit stand out better. And then having to paint these, like, wings white afterwards, this took, like, ten coats of paint <laughs> to get them to be white after I'd painted it silver. It was the biggest mistake I have ever made. I will never prime any anything that I want to do white is getting white primer from now on. Because, like, yeah, it does look good, but fucking hell, this took a lot of time <laughs> this was like a, a full day of just painting white on the wings it sucked I, I would not want to do that again thankfully i only primed the wings that dark silver her like robe and stuff and the birds <clears throat> i left the backpack like off when i was building it so like her her, her i'd paint i'd primed like a uh either white or gray it wasn't too bad she wasn't as bad to do her wings were were not fun. I, I would not want to do that again. Primed over, primed dark. Um, and then <clears throat> my like my crowning achievement, my 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 proudest moment, um, was my Belisarius call. Can I? One sec. Let me see if I can crank up the. I turned down the exposure a little bit because it was uh, too blown out on the. Tomb Kings, but for this guy, I might want to bring the exposure back up just a tiny bit. There we go. So yeah, this guy, Belisarius Call, is... He was fun. <laughs> like, there's a lot going on here. I am incredibly happy with how the little skulls turned out on his little servo bits. Um... All his little arms and the little glassy dome ball down on this, like, spider pet thing he's got here. Like, this thing was a lot of work. And honestly, I only did this, like, this was probably, like, the 10th or 11th miniature I painted. Like, I, I picked this guy up right away because I'm a big fan of the ad mech and I wanted to paint some ad mech. And then I was like super intimidated by it because I was like, oh god, I don't know. I might have gotten gotten in over my head <laughs> on, on picking up this model because it's 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 so crazy looking. Um, so I, walk, I, walk, I looked up like a guide video for how to paint him uh, online and kind of followed this guide video and it's kind of like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna commit to it. We're just gonna go, and I think it worked. I even did a little bit of freehanding on this guy because like the the little cogtooth pattern, the like white mage symbols on his uh, hood there, that's not sculpted onto the model. That's just like freehand, freehand painted on, which was was fun, fun to try. Um, and then for comparison, just so you can see a comparison, uh, this is the first miniature I ever painted. Uh, this is the first, first ever thing I, I, I painted as a miniature. Uh, this, this little space marine right here. Uh, I can always remember him because he's got this, uh, uh, purity seal? I don't know what the heck those things are called. The, the, little, the little seal thingy there on his leg. He's got one on his, his left leg. It's the only one of this squad that has one on his left leg. I always know which one it was. But yeah, this was like... I bought the like the starter box from 9th edition. I was just like, I kind of want to try this out. Like This looks really fun. Uh, and painted him up. And yeah, he's, he's just a, a classic blue boy. 
But yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's not too hard. We'll, we'll start showing off how to paint some of this stuff today. And uh, I, I think gener generally, like, it's pretty easy to to do. If you, if you follow some, some simple steps, you can make your life a lot easier. So for Tomb Kings, uh, again, this is a comparison. Like, uh, this right here is the paint test one I did. Uh, there's been no highlighting done. This was one coat of paint per color. Just a quick, let's just make sure I'm happy with how these colors look. And I am pretty happy with how these colors look. Um, I think I need to clean up a couple spots on this, but whatever, it's fine. He'll, he's fine when you're, when you're looking at him as, as a tiny little thing on the table from you know, a million feet away. Uh, and that's, that's when you're, when you're painting a hundred infantry, that's kind of the way you have to look at it. If you try to paint them all to perfection, you're going to be there the rest of your life and you're not going to have a very good day. Um, let me hit, throw that over there. Um, we're going to start with this guy. This is like the commander. Oh, right, I need to turn the exposure down one notch because these guys get too blown out otherwise. This is like the squad leader commander for my little infant, one of my infantry units. I have two infantry units I have to paint. Um, so we're going to be doing him up to start with. And I think what I'm going to do to start with is we're just going to try to paint all of the bone on all of them. Uh, the plan for what I'm going to try to accomplish today is I'm going to stream until I'm either like at a point where I'm like, yeah, I think I'm done painting for today. <laughs> um, or until I've finished the 19 members of the squadron uh, to the standard that that guy I just showed was at. Uh, or until Techno Ghosty is ready to start uh, streaming Dark Souls, because we're going to do some Dark Souls today, too. Uh, and also, Techno Ghosty, if you are here, uh, can you give me like a 20-minute like a heads up on that? Because I just realized I don't think I have Discord installed on this computer yet. Uh, I, I, I didn't, in, I don't usually use Discord for anything other than voice chat, so I haven't installed it yet. Um, which will need to be done before we, before we do Dark Souls. Uh, let's start. Get some water on this brush here. Get this nice and done. Yeah, beautiful. Did you end up getting the pinks, the pink tails? <laughs> You start 1 p.m. Let's you know. Okay, sweet, awesome. So we're we're doing. So yeah. So okay, I I I'd see you've been starting a little later lately. I wasn't sure if that was the the plan for today or not. So the way I've been doing bone is I primed them all with Corax White, uh, and I've just been using Agrax Earthshade. And we're just gonna we're just gonna douse this guy in some Agrax Earthshade, um, and see see how we're how we're doing. So shake that up a little bit. I'm gonna use a fairly large brush for this, a size three. I'm using these. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. Fu, fu, fumui um, brand brushes. They're, uh, what the heck is the name of the nice kind of brushes? Sorry, I'm blanking on the names of brushes here. It's not an acrylic brush. It's the, the animal fur brush. Uh, really nice. Um, picked them up on Amazon, super cheap, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, and yeah, paint, we're just starting off with some Citadel Agrax Earthshade. Uh, let's just start with getting a, a handful of that on my brush. I'm honestly going to get a pretty liberal amount of, of Agrax on my brush. I am clipping this shut after every use, because otherwise I'm definitely going to knock this off off my, my desk, and it is going to be a disaster. Then we're just going to start kind of coating the whole guy. I'm not even going to worry too much about like getting into specific spots or anything. I just kind of want to get the whole... The whole skeleton coated a bit. Ah, uh, you know, I could probably use a little bit more on here. We're just gonna get a little bit more on here. That'll be fine. And just get in there and just kinda get the whole skeleton. Just nice and covered. Nothing, nothing precise, nothing fancy. We're not looking for Picking out any details, doing anything fancy like that. We're even gonna try to get in there a little bit. See if I can get this rib cage in there. Sorry, some of the, sometimes this camera may not be at the best angle for you, but it's just kind of a general smear some egg racks all over the whole skeleton kind of a step. And we're gonna get some on there. Not worried about brush control here, not worried about anything like that. We're just trying to get some, some egg racks on the mini. 
Let me see if we can get a little bit more of that. We're probably going to be going through some Agrax on this army. There is a lot of bone to be painting. Um, let's get all of that on there. Beautiful. Get the hand. Try to get all of that. Let's get in the crotch. Get that all painted. Get this all done. That is looking pretty good there. I need to get his face. Make sure we get the face. It's, it makes the zooming almost making me imagine you paint that big ad mech guy all in one. Um, which big ad mech guy? Because some of them I did. Uh, not call. Uh, Belisarius call the big named guy I did. I painted him in, in the sub assemblies. But for a lot of smaller minis, I, I like to paint them in one because if you can't get your brush in somewhere, light would not be able to get in there, and you don't need to waste your time, like stressing yourself about painting it. The big, big one. Um, I'll grab I'll grab them in a second here to see if I if I can make sure I know which one we're talking about. Because the like the the walker one, where it was like the big two-legged chicken walker one. I did actually paint that one all in one. That was that was just one piece. It kind of comes down to like when I decide if I'm going to be painting it all in one. Like, these guys, actually, I'm not going to lie, would have been a good candidate for painting them in sub-assemblies um, because of the shield. Because typically what you want to look for is, like, is there anything that's going to make it where, like, getting my brush in is going to be a real hassle? Uh, and if so, you might want to leave that bit off. Like Celestine's wings I left off. Um, whereas on this guy, for the most part, I can just kind of go like that. And ta-da, he's, he's like, basically done. That's that's pretty much everything I need to do for the for the actual skeleton bit of the skeleton, is just smear some some of that on there. And I'm not worried about, like, over overpainting. Like, if I get paint, you know, if I'm getting some Agrax on bits that aren't going to be bone in the end, uh, that's totally fine, because I can just, I'm going to be painting over that anyway, so it's just going to cover it up. So, painting over anything extra. I think I'm going to do... This little skull on the end of his kopesh here has bone too. Why not? That'll be fine. So yeah, there's one basically done. Uh, now if I want the next step would be going on to the other colors, which I'm probably not going to do today. Maybe we will. We'll see. Um, just trying to see if there's any more bits I need to pick out on here for bone. Because when you're working with washes like this, tends to work best if you can do it all in one go because once it starts drying you reapply it you can get it you can like reactivate it and it'll get smeary and gloopy looking and it's not great but yeah this is pretty much done that's that's one one bone bit done as you can see like it's got a decent amount of texture to it it's got some some you know highlighting and shading kind of built in with the with the way washes work uh it gives it a nice bone bone color how does this compare to Let's compare you to you. Do you guys look roughly similar? Yeah, I think those look roughly similar. That'll that'll work for me. And there's step one of, of skeleton one done. Where am I gonna put these guys while they're while they're drying? I didn't think that part out. Get Tom a new horizon, spent the rest of my evening grinding for nook miles and helping islands. Ah, oh, reserved for a random villager from the Tom Nook set. Ugh. Gotta start bashing him over the head with a with the uh, bug catching net. See if you can chase a few of them off your island. No, <laughs> don't, don't. I, I don't even think that does anything. And also, like, don't be mean to your villagers. That's that's not what Animal Crossing is all about. Okay, let's grab the next one. I do do that. <laughs> We're going to grab the next one. Here's our next skelly boy. It's going to be the same general process. Um, I'm just painting straight out of the pot on this. Uh, sometimes I'm using other paints. I will definitely be using a palette where I'll be mixing them. But because I'm just kind of like... Grab a handful of Agrax and smear on skeleton. I'm not worried about a palette for this. It is totally fine. Um, let's just, again... Get in there. Get a bunch of paint. 
on the mini. I am not worried at all about overpainting. It is totally fine. This is layer one, base color one. You can just paint over it later. It's not a big deal. So get that all in there. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty straightforward. Oh my gosh, she's so much lighter on this side. I got them all done and I turned them around. It was like, my gosh, that's right. I haven't painted the other side of them yet. Um, we'll get some more brush on there. Ash Frobert with my net so we got the hint. Bah, reported from Isabella just to be really new. <laughs> did, they ever, did they add a way to like, I just want this villager gone? <laughs> like, can you just be like, Tom, please, I'm begging you for the love of God. Just, just yeet this bastard. Or do you just have to get them to, like, decide to move out? I don't think so. Yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't I never heard of one. That would be, that would be a potential feature. That, that might be worth looking into, Nintendo. If you're watching my, my Warhammer painting stream, which I'm sure you are, Nintendo, you should, uh, you should totally look into doing that for the next Animal Crossing. Or patch it in for this Animal Crossing. What the heck, you know? Might as well, might as well just, you know, get right in there. Uh, that's a little too much pooled up there. This is kind of the only thing you gotta watch on this step, is just watch for if it's pooling up anywhere on the on the bones that you don't like. Pooling up somewhere that's not in the bones, not a big deal, because you're gonna be painting over that anyway. And uh, if it is pooling up, like, on his forehead there, you just kinda swipe your brush back across a little bit. You can usually just pick it right up, even it out a tiny bit there. And... A little bit there, let's just... Sweep that up. That looks much better. Um, there's another one basically done. Is there, is there, oh, there's a little bit in his elbow I didn't get. Get that. Uh, get that in there. The trick you can do in New Horizons is one of the villagers thinking. It could be they're thinking of moving. If you leave them to think and don't talk to them, they'll switch to another random villager the next day thinking about moving. Really? I did not know that. I had a uh, my initial island on New Horizons, so I'm probably gonna reset if I ever go back to it because it's been four years since I checked in on them. Um, but my initial island on New Horizons, I had nothing but like the the gym bro villagers. They were they were all workout enthusiasts, and it was driving me up a fucking wall because all they did all day was talk about how they wanted to work, uh, how, lifting weights and whatever, and it was driving me fucking nuts. So I kind of stopped playing as a result of that. Let's get this back over here. Oh, you know what I did do? A few tank miniatures to paint. Yeah, get painting. They don't paint themselves. I'm gonna wash off this uh, brush a little bit though, so I'm not getting too much dried, dried paint on there. One oh, sec, I brought some paper towel in the other room. I got it sitting behind me here. Panthers are all black. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, you still do gotta paint it, and you gotta weather them, and you gotta do all the fancy stuff. Honestly, painting black is, is not easy. Like, if you want it to look nice, um, like painting black is, is really, really tough. All black and all white are, like, the two toughest colors. Game of Thrones tabletop army game was so much fun, they kept changing the rules way too fast. Oh, that's unfortunate. I have some of my villagers are jocks too, or lazy personalities. They're talking about working out or eating. I want the ones that, are t that I want eating. Give me, give me a bunch of Animal Crossing villagers that just want to chow down all day. That is right, right up my speed. I want, I want to, I want to have a, a chill village. All right, let's get this going. Um, more bones. Just get more bones. Get it all on there. This is going to be great. Oh my gosh. You are absolutely soaking in this Agrax today. I am going to be needing to buy more Agrax, I think, before I'm done with this army. That is very likely. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. Because <laughs> it's like $7 a friggin' bottle or something like that. It's really not that cheap. That's okay. 
Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, there we go. Get that all on there. Get that all on there. There we go. Now we're looking good. Uh, get in there, please. Get the front of that rib cage and then get in along that leg. Perfect. That's going pretty well. I don't think I ever saw the Game of Thrones like tabletop. Is it like a like a like a wargaming kind of tabletop or more like a like a D and D kind of tabletop? I don't think I ever looked into that. I enjoyed the show. I've never read the books. Okay, that's good. Can I get that. Ugh. Skeleton's favorite food is ribs. <laughs> I don't follow the tabletop gaming scene as much as I should. For as many miniatures as I collect and build, at least. Because, man, if you think I have a lot of painted miniatures, you should see the number... Oh, tap the back of them. You should see the number of unpainted miniatures I have. There's, there's a lot. I mean, just this box that this guy came in alone, there's still, like... A hundred of them I have to paint. It is it is a never-ending process. Okay, get that in there. That should be fine. Are we mostly happy with you? I think we're mostly happy with you. Yeah, that'll do. Wargaming Tabletop, Army Countdown, Groups of 12, 4 Horse Units, Heroes. It was amazing for the first few months. Obsessed with Game of Thrones, so I was super happy to start my uh, Wargaming journey there, then try out X-Wing. Ooh, I, I want to try out X-Wing, too. I want to try out X-Wing, and I want to try out Star Wars Legions, because I think they are... They both look really, really interesting. But I don't have... I don't want to have the time <laughs> to be spending collecting another new army. I, I, if I collect another army, Bethany's going to kill me. <laughs> I've already got too many too many plastic minis floating around. I only grabbed the like the big fancy stuff to show off what was painted, and there's also like the pile of stuff that isn't painted yet, so there's a lot. Legions would suck me in hard, don't got cash to support that, I hear ya. There is a lot. I think what I might do today, because usually we start our Dark Souls at around 7, I'm streaming for, probably painting for about 20 minutes here and streaming for about 40. So I'd be starting streaming about two hours. I think I'm going to aim for just getting all of the bone done today is going to be the plan. We'll just let's try to get all the bone finished on all 19 of these guys. And then we'll do like the next time I do this uh, or if I do, you know, do this something off. And we'll try to do this. I'll try to do this whole set on stream. Even if I paint some other stuff off stream, I might, I'll keep this set for stream painting. And we'll try to do like the next color uh, on stream. Because this is kind of how I batch paint. is like pick a color and then go through your entire squad or, or whatever you're doing um, with that color. Paint them all up. Get out, you know, if, I, if, you're, if you're doing you know, agrax, get all your agrax on there. Then go on to your purple and get all your purple on there. You know, do do it in order, and you can kind of pick order based on like what you think is gonna be the easiest to get to or hardest to get to as you're painting, just to make your life easier. Uh, let's just all right, smash a whole bunch of that across there. Look at that! Boom. Got like three quarters of a skeleton painted right there. Boom. Get the eye sockets done. That's nice. Get the shoulder blades nice and done. Get that all in there. Make sure we get his hand that's holding that shield. Get the hand that's holding this spear. We good with all that? Um, 
should be about fine, right? We're not trying anything fancy here. We're just yeah, bashing some color across. This Brinstar Star from Metroid. Yeah, I just put on a Metroid, like, chill music from Metroid mix. Uh, I'm thankful I'm not good at painting. I was probably spend an ungodly amount of time building Tau, Space Marines, and Orc Armies, whatever other random Star Wars Legion minis, like Clone and Stormtroopers. Yeah, I want to do some Clone Troopers. I think that'd be really fun. Especially after, after having been watching, like, Bad Batch recently, like... I would really love to do, like, a set of the, the Bad Batch troops. Get all of them painted up. I think they'd be really, really fun. Although there'd be a lot of freehanding. Painting, like, the the skull thing on Hunter's helmet and, like, crosshair would be quite the, uh, the adventure. One more accurate arc troopers. Ooh, that'd be cool. Okay, uh, oh wait, I gotta get this. This isn't done. This arm in here is not finished. Oh, it is. Alright, there we go. There's another one done. <laughs> kind of burn through them here. Uh, you get in there. I'll rinse this off. Yeah, Legion's got a lot of cool stuff. I've seen some, some people that paint Legions on YouTube, and like, does have a lot of really, really neat miniatures that I would love to love to get in on but it would take forever i actually have some model bits over here i was building something from an old star wars uh, amt model set Ooh, this is one where the the primer did some interesting stuff see that base is like almost a completely different color at the back than this at the front doesn't show up as much on camera but primer did some interesting work on this this actually might end up because of how textured this ended up looking this might actually end up looking really cool Phase 1.5 Arc Trooper. Helmets look so cool. Five's Echo. Yeah. Yeah. Grievous is my hero. Stand by him till death. Nice. Grievous would be a fun miniature to paint. I think I think he'd be a very fun miniature to paint. Especially if you got like all the different lightsabers on him. If you're doing like full, full sabers out Grievous. I think he would be a very, very fun miniature to paint. Keep this going. Keep this going. Get that across there. Bruce was cool in 2003 Clone Wars. Yeah. That was, that was... I'm really glad they put that on Disney Plus now. You can actually go watch that. Legends Grievous backstory was just my I don't think I ever actually looked that up. I don't think I ever actually looked up what his, his old backstory was. That was, I think, right around the era that I was kind of getting out of, like, following all the expanded universe stuff, because there was just too much of it. They, they were doing way too much around that era. Um, which kind of happens anytime there's, you know, new movies out, is what I've, I've learned. <laughs> You know, we've seen that happen again with the, the sequels and stuff like that. Was that, you know, as these new new movies come out, people kind of rush to fill in, like, more backstory on their favorite characters that the movies maybe didn't fill in, and then you just end up with, like, so much flood of stuff coming out. And it can be really obnoxious trying to just keep up on it and, like... What do I need to care about here, and what do I not need to care about here? Which we're seeing a little bit right now. I think Star Wars is kind of hitting that point now where it's like, guys, y you gotta rein it in just a tiny bit. I, I love it. I'm having a great time, but we gotta we gotta tone it back <laughs> because we're getting into like I can't keep track of what the hell's going on here territory. There's only so many hours in a day, and I can't spend all of them watching Star Wars as much as I would love to. I do still have, you know, a job. Alright. There's that. Let me get this cleaned up a tiny bit there. Get the bottoms of his feet taken care of. Well, those are probably going to end up covered in sand a little bit when I base this, but that's fine. Um, 
Bounty or tribesman or something. He was a hero to his people, warlord against slavers. I have to, I'll have to look that up. I haven't... What are they? Are they Kalish? Is that the... The species name of his, his people? They're in, um... Old Republic, a bunch. There's a, there's a handful of them, kind of... Dotted about the Old Republic. Oh! Didn't like something. Can I... Can I get into mod mode from here? No. One sec, I can get into mod mode from over here. Let me pull that up. Yeah. I don't have this actually set up. Go into here and go into here and go into how do I get into my, my mod view? How do I get into my mod view? What the hell is this? Manage poll, stream info, manage goals. Don't want that. What are you doing here? Can I switch to... It claims I'm in mod view. Odd. It's not letting me see what that dot 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 was. Whatever. Sorry about that, if that was anything important. <laughs> Uh, Kalish, yeah, okay, good deal. I was like, I thought that's what it was. There's, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just showing up, it does, it's not even, like, showing me, like, any mod actions or any reports of mod, auto mod doing anything. No idea. Normally it'll be like, oh, auto mod blocked this message, would you like to let it go through? And it, it just didn't. Because <laughs> I've had that happen a few times where there's like, oh, it's being goofy and I need to need to go in and manually approve something or manually deny something occasionally. Very rarely, thankfully. It's a link. Oh, I see, usually it'll let me uh, ask if I want to approve a link because I can usually one-time approve a link. Very strange. Can't make that reappear. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Like usually it'll 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 ask me like, hey, do you want to one time approve a link? Apparently Twitch doesn't feel like playing ball today. Sorry. Your link has been destroyed. <laughs> Wanna share with Ghosty too? Tell you what, um send it to me in uh, my private messages and I will just I'll post it in chat. <laughs> Like to see auto mod block me in my own. Oh god, that was too much. Okay, we put we put too much too much ag agrax on his face. He's a he's a little he's a little messy there. We just gotta sweep that off a bit. Okay, are we good? Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I don't think there's any white showing. It's kind of what I'm looking at here is like, is there no white left? If I've gotten rid of all of the white, that's what I'm looking for at this stage. Just get them down to the point where they're like, mostly bone color. And then I can go back in and touch it up if I want to add any you know, highlights or anything. I can go back in and do that later. But this will give me a good enough base to work with that I should be happy. Alright, yeah, since it's a go see 2 auto mod blocking user actions as well. Yeah! Uh, I mean, I get that like... Oh, did I just paint my monitor? <laughs> That's uh fix that up a tiny bit. Don't paint your monitor. <laughs> I don't think I need to do that. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, let me... Blah, blah, blah. No. 
think probably the reason why... Oh, it's a YouTube video. Um, okay. I will... I probably won't post that in chat. I will open link in new tab? Oh, okay. So we got like a... Ah, stop that. We got like a complete lore video from Meta Nerds. All right, yeah, I'll check that out. I'm going to bookmark that for later so that I can watch that later. Cool. Thank you. All right. Brush clean. How many more do we have to do? I've done how many now? Six? A lot. Okay. What is this cord? <laughs> One sec. There's, a, there's like a random gray cable. M meandering through my, my thing is here. I don't actually know what it connects to. What is this? <laughs> um, hello? Oh, you know what this is. I know what this is. Hold up. Get out of here, you. It's a, it's a Nintendo Wii sensor bar. The cable. The cable is always there for reasons. Yeah. It was my Nintendo Wii sensor bar. I'd had it sitting on top of my, my monitor from one time I did a Wii stream. Uh, when I played um, Metroid, actually. It was Metroid Other M. Uh, the really terrible Metroid. And I had my my sensor bar sitting on top of my monitor, and then it fell off the back one day, and I never bothered to dig it out because I don't need it. <laughs> and it's just kind of been sitting there ever since. That's that's what that is. It's fine. Oh man, actually sitting with good posture for once. Look at this. Getting fancy in here today. All right, beautiful. I'm gonna start this guy on the front, I think. Oh boy. And I'm not too worried that I'm like staining part of the like pole on this halberd here or spear. It's fine, because I'm gonna be going over that. Uh, the, the color I'm using for the spears anyway is black. <laughs> so that's not gonna show through. If I was doing something super light, um, sometimes staining can be a problem because then you're going to have a hard time painting an even color coat over that. Um, but all the colors I'm using on this are relatively dark colors uh, as far other than the bone. So like getting the bone out of the way will be easy enough and then I can go back in and when I'm painting my other colors I'm going to need to be a lot neater than this so that I'm not painting onto the bone. Um, but for now, just painting the, the bone up, we can be a little messy. We can get some, some staining on the other bits. We can get some... Oh my gosh, this guy's got a big old hole in the back of his head. Look at that. <laughs> Always fun painting these models. Sometimes you'll, you'll catch details on them that you maybe missed when you were building them or didn't really didn't really stand out to you. Then you start painting it and you're just like, oh, whoa, look at that. Like, I was um, building uh, my... Iron Strider, I think they're called? The Admech Walker thing. Um, and I'll pull this up in a second here because I have it sitting next to me so I can actually bring it up here and show what I'm talking about. There was a bit on that that I was just like, what is this? When I started building it that I hadn't noticed at all when I uh, was like looking at the model and thinking about buying it online. That should be good. Hey, thanks for the bits. Much appreciated, man. Very kind of you. That's, uh... That's gonna be, like... One, one seventh of the way... Of the way to a new bottle of uh, Agrax Earthshade. Which I will be going through at an alarming rate. So, appreciated. That'll keep the Agrax stores flowing... I wonder what that's named after, because I know when I was playing um, Total War Warhammer, I caught that there were some of the like city names. I was like, oh, this is this is what my paint is named after. Like, uh, I found the city of Nulm, famed for its its oil, apparently. 
And then uh, I found uh, Zandri down in the Tomb Kings area, which is the Zandri dust, which is the uh, the sand on my my other mini is actually just Zandri dust. That's all it is. It's like the best tan. If you just want a khaki tan, that is like the way to go. Zandri dust is that is a paint that will put in work. <laughs> It covers super well. It's super smooth and consistent. Like this is this is definitely one of my like. I could not live without this this Zandri dust. Shake it up here so it's not all smeared looking. There we go. This stuff right here. This this is this is a powerhouse paint. Played Total War three yet? I did. Um. I'm actually looking forward to playing it more now that I have the new computer, because it can actually run. I did actually, uh... Can I... Is there a convenient way to screen cap? Switch this over to... One sec, let me add... Screen capture... This. Lamb. Oh, gosh! Inception! <laughs> uh, get this all out of here. Get this all out of here. Get this all out of here. My Morrowind installation that I was checking in on. Yeah, I've actually got it uh, somewhere on here. I just installed it the other day. Did I uninstall it? Maybe I uninstalled it. But no, I do have it. Um, I think I, I think I reinstalled it. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I had my... Also, you're going to go down to... Here, I think. Turn that off. Turn that off. Beautiful. Yeah, I do have it installed. Uh, I thought I had it installed. Let me check if I have it installed. I ran out of hard drive space on this thing already because it turns out video games have gotten way too big. I've apparently got Warhammer 2 installed somewhere. Do I? I don't think you're right, Steam. I think you're wrong. Yeah, we're going to tell to uninstall Warhammer 2. I think it's wrong. I don't think Warhammer 2 is actually installed anywhere on this computer. But yeah, I do have Warhammer 3. Uh, I played it a little bit, uh, but it was on my old computer, and it, it did not run particularly well on the old computer. It may have ran, but not great. This guy's holding his shield at kind of a jaunty angle. <laughs> so yeah, I'll probably do another stream of that at some point. Uh, I might actually do like a Tomb Kings playthrough at some point. Uh, maybe I'll do that as like a celebration once I've, I've finished my army. That might be a fun idea. Once we finish painting the army, we'll, we'll do like a Tomb Kings playthrough to, to celebrate. I was playing... I can't remember what her name is. Uh, when I... When I was finished building the army, I like booted it up and was like, oh, let me, get, let me look at some, some army some units in-game for some inspiration for paint colors and stuff like that. Um, and what was her name? There's the there's the lady uh, that starts near Libera, and she was ri really fun. Uh, it's not Neferata because Neferata is the one that works with Nagash, and I know it wasn't her. I actually have I have her <laughs> sitting behind me on the floor. Oh yeah, that's that's another thing. I built, I bought some of the uh, Age of Sigmar, like uh, they're not officially Tomb Kings, but some of the Age of Sigmar characters that were Tomb Kings in the old uh, Warhammer Fantasy, uh, because I was, you know, looking forward to adding them as display pieces alongside my army. Like they won't have rules, but I can certainly have them sitting on a shelf next to them, just just to look cool. Oh gosh, this is a very awkward angle to paint at. Don't care for this at all. Let's get this nice and <laughs> nice and damp, because we're just gonna cheat and just kind of get my brush super coated and then just shove it in there and let the paint find its way. Best part of working with washes, you can just sometimes like, yeah, I can't get into that spot. Doesn't matter. Don't need to. All I gotta do is just get my brush nice and coated and just kind of shove it in there, and the paint will find its way. Okay, are we good? Are we good? Uh, I'm 
not as happy with this guy as I was with some of the other ones. It was being a bit of a pain. That's okay. Again, I don't, I don't need to be a perfectionist. I need to get over my, like, painting every single trooper to, you know, character standards problem that I have. Because I do that. I tend to paint, like, every single guy to, like, the same standard that I'd paint, like, a named character. And that's a bad habit. Don't do that. It's, it takes so much effort and time and, like... You don't need to do that. It's fine. There's a hundred of these guys. You're, you're not going to be looking at each and every one of them in detail on a, on a tabletop. It's just not going to happen. Don't paint my monitor again. We're not, we're not going to do that. Where's an example of that? I think I actually have a good... <laughs> I took way too much time on this guy up here. Do not be painting all of your miniatures to, like, the level of detail where you're, you're, you're putting, like, extra layers on their con on their lenses and stuff like that. It's just ridiculous. You don't need to do that. You can paint them much simpler than that, and they'll look just fine. <laughs> Let's... What do we want to do next? Grab one of you guys. We are still burning through that Agrax, but that is fine. Let's... Oh, you've got something. A little string stuck to you. I'm guessing that was like a, a hair or a feather or something. And it got stuck to the... Oh, there's more down there, which is totally going to show up when I do this. Possibly. I'll shave that off later. Like, I'm guessing there was, like, a, a bit of dust that was going through when I was priming. And it got melted into the, uh, the miniature. Because, when I was, like I said, when I was priming, it was just so windy. And I was like, I try to prime outside, because, you know, you shouldn't spray spray paint indoors. It's, it's really not good for your health. Um, so, I opened up, like, the sliding door to my back patio. And I was, like, trying to spray out the back door. But the wind was just so fast that the spray... I had to, I was having to hold the models, like... Like an inch away from the, the spray paint can, which is way closer than you're supposed to. So the, the paint wasn't getting as much time to, like, spread around as it should. Uh, so it was going on pretty thick. Um, but if you, if you held it any farther away, it all just got blown away and dissipated. It was it was really messy and not a, not a great time. It's the problem with trying to prime, is that, like... Trying to prime in Wisconsin is... Especially in the winter is not the easiest thing because our weather is so chaotic. And cold. And not the easiest to work with. That's the other thing, when it's cold, it'll start freezing, and then you're you're dealing with you know, paint freezing before it's actually hitting the miniature, so it's not going on right, and uh, just all kinds of problems. Yeah, I was kinda what I ended up doing is just kinda like huddling in the door frame <laughs> and trying to like spray so that there'd be enough cross ventilation from the stiff breeze blowing past it was, it was it was a fun time i look forward to the summer when i can actually prime more of these without having to worry about endangering my health all right here's another one good enough for me you shoved into the the back there. Just kind of keep rinsing my brush off so that I'm not getting Agrax drying up on my brush. Because Agrax is a pretty oily, sticky paint. And if it dries up in your brush, it makes your brush really a pain to work with. I think... We are about halfway done with what I wanted to paint here today. Uh, if I finish up a little early, what I'll probably do is uh, play some Fallout for a little bit. I've been playing some Fallout 76 in my free time. Just messing around with that. So we might switch to playing a little bit of Fallout until Dark Souls is, is ready to go. Because, like, that was another one where was like, this, ca this game came out and it was in such a 
bad state. Like Fallout 76 was not a not a good game at launch, um, but it had a lot of potential. And it was it was, always, it was very disappointing. It was like I can see the potential for a good game in here, but we aren't there. <laughs> you know, this this isn't it. Um, and I was like, well, let me check in on it and see if they've. I'll oh, see. Like this didn't rhyme the hand there at all. That was just gray. That's okay. It's pretty tucked in there. No one will know. Don't tell anyone. Not like I'm live streaming this. <laughs> but yeah, it was like it was, it was a rough launch, a rough state at launch. So I was like, well, let me go back and oh, did my my Metroid music run out. It did. Uh, what do we want to throw on next? What's gonna be the next one? Let's do the relaxing stuff off the Hollow Knight soundtrack. Screw it. That's a good one. So my fellow pharaohs, how goes the painting? Uh, th there's a collection of them building up back there. How's it going, Ye Master? Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's going well. I'm, I'm just kind of slowly churning through getting the bones done on all these boys. We're, we're, we're chucking through them pretty quick, which is good. I've got a lot of them. <laughs> And we're not being super neat here. This is just the, the get the bone color turning into look like bone. So you'll see that we are just kind of smashing that brush around and letting the paint find its own way. Modded Minecraft is still consuming me. Yeah, I need to... I was just looking at that too. Because remember, I, I did a stream of Minecraft a while back where I looked at like my original Minecraft server that I played with with my friend. I was like, oh, you know, I got to get that file set up on my new computer. So I downloaded it off Google Drive, because we, we just loaded it onto Google Drive. And it's not loading correctly. It's it's loading the base seed, but it's not loading any of the stuff we built. Which is frustrating. I'm gonna have to figure out I might have to like boot up my old computer and copy the files over from there. That might that might be the fix. We'll see. I'll get it working. Cause like I would like to go back and play more on that world. I wanna play I haven't played Minecraft since like version one point probably nine so I got I got a lot of stuff to catch up on make sure not to make them too black like Necrons yeah yeah no I think I think they're coming up pretty pretty good I think I'm pretty pretty happy with the general vibe of these these skelly boys like this for, for one quick coat of paint like you can see how quick that was to paint up this the bones look pretty darn good. Um, I'm very happy with, with the effort to <laughs> uh, effort to results ratio I'm getting on these guys. <laughs> because yeah, like, you can see that was a nice quick little paint job. And very happy with the results. Yeah, here's the kind of end comparison of what I'm aiming for with all of them. Is They're going to end up looking something like this guy. Uh kind of purple on the shield. I'm going to do some turquoise if there's like other accents on the like if it's not just one flat color but there's like, you know, a crest or something like um, when I get to we'll paint him next. Screw it. Oh, does this guy not, have, not actually have what I was thinking of? Well, gosh darn it. Who has what I'm thinking of? Does, does, do none of you have this? Did I actually not use this shield on this set of guys at all? Maybe I didn't. Whatever. When I get to, like, somebody like this, where he's got this banner at the top, what I might end up doing is, like... Eh. I might end up, like, splitting these different regions up and do, like, purple, turquoise, purple, turquoise, purple, turquoise, like, across the, the, back, the backing bit. And then do like that kind of coppery color across all of there. And I think these I'll probably just do like red, maybe? I think red will look nice if I do a nice bright red for the like fabric bits on them. But yeah. This is the this is the the banner standard bearer that we're gonna be using. But yeah, there's some some that I'm gonna be doing some fun stuff. Oh Tekka was a classic, yeah, that was that was great. What's the biggest model I own? Um Painted or not painted? <laughs> I'll go grab one um, if you want to see it. I didn't grab either of them yet, but if you want to see, I can show you my biggest model. You just let me know if you mean painted or not painted.
I'll start working on this guy while you think. <laughs> More of a feed the beast. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's... Thank you. I couldn't remember the name of that the other day. I was trying to think of it. I was like, I played uh, whatever Mod Pack uh, Hat Films did back in the day. And it was totally feed the beast. That was... Yeah, that was classic. Classic, classic Minecraft era. Oh, man. Good memories. Or he's a Minecraft Mod Packs. Yeah, it's wild to me. I kind of wish that I could go back and play Feed the Beast, like classic Feed the Beast again, but I tried installing it one time, and like, because the versions are all, you know, trying to find the version of each mod, you know, independent mod that you need, and get that all set up to match the installed version of Minecraft you have nowadays, because they didn't update it all. Some of the mods, you know, stopped not being worked on at some point in the last 15 years. <laughs> like, it's it's so hard to, to find one that's, like, close to what I'm looking for. If I'm trying to get that, like, recapture the nostalgia vibe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the, the catch is that I want an old mod pack from, like, 2011. <laughs> Like, there's a very specific mod pack that I would like to use. It was the one I used back in the day, and unfortunately, I doubt that that is managed anymore. I, I looked into it a while back, and it was like, a bunch of the stuff was out of date, and the dependencies weren't working, so I would have had to manually go in and find all the files for it and reinstall it, and some of that stuff just isn't, isn't floating around particularly conveniently anymore. The name of the biggest model you want? I'll uh, tell you what, um... E Master, do you want the biggest painted model or the biggest unpainted model? Because I will, I will go grab it right now. It's sitting one. It's in the next room, so I can e either of them. They're both just in the next room. I can go grab that, and hopefully it will fit on camera. <laughs> oh, also let me let me ask you this: uh, Warhammer specific or just model in general? Because the biggest model I own is not going to fit on camera or in my desk uh, because it is a ridiculously too big model of Deep Space Nine. I have I have a, a absolutely massive Deep Space Nine model uh, that is not moving and not going to fit on camera. It is a real beast. It's cool though. It's real cool. get you there but biggest warhammer model there's two contenders for that one of the biggest one i have is, is not painted um uh but the biggest painted one i have i can i can grab two they'll, they'll both fit on screen i think hopefully <laughs> might have to hold them like back here <laughs> Okay, I don't need to do anything else with this guy right now. There's some more bone on the, like, standard, but I might actually do a different bone color for the stuff on the standard to make it look slightly more weathered. I have the, um, Skeleton Horde, um, contrast paint, and that comes up much darker. Um, can I actually show that here? So, what I'm using is the one on the left. And then the one on the right there is the Skeleton Horde. And Skeleton Horde comes up with that much, like... It's much tan, much tanner looking and much more weathered looking. So I think for some of the, like, aged bone, like the stuff on the standards and, like, the bones on their shields and stuff, uh, and possibly for my big bone dragon, I might go for that, uh... The one over here, the more weathered one. Because I think that'll look... It'll add a little bit more variety and vibrancy into the uh, into the the model, but yeah, this is the one that most people were like, yeah, this this is the best looking bone color of what the little test set, uh, set I did. Okay, keep going through this. But yeah, the biggest two models I own. Um, are, I have a Nagash from Age of Sigmar, who is 
I think he's just over a foot tall. He's he's enormous. He's absolutely massive. I did not realize when I bought him uh, how how much model I was getting for for the price. Uh, and frankly, it is too much model. I it, it is going to take an age to paint. I'm probably going to wait until I have somewhere where I can set up an airbrush, to get in there because oh my gosh, it's so much so much plastic on that boy. Um, but then the next biggest model I have is. Uh, I have an Imperial Knight Crusader. Uh, it's fully painted. That one is all set to go and ready, you know, painted up and done. Um, and he's a big boy. He's about five-ish inches tall. Like, as you can see, there's a massive size difference between Nagash and the Knight. And most people think of the Imperial Knight as, like, a big model. But Nagash is... It puts them to shame. He is quite, quite enormous. That's all I had back in hometowns of football size vendor class star shard. Nice. I also have um outside of Warhammer, I have that uh Deep Space Nine model that's like I think that thing is about a foot and a half across <laughs> and then a little over a foot tall. It's it's quite big. Um and then I've got uh an Enterprise E. That's about a foot long. Got a bunch of Star Trek models. They're, yeah, pretty, pretty large. I'm in the middle of... I say in the middle of... I bought this thing, like, a couple of years ago and started working on it and then just stopped. Um, uh, of a Romulan Warbird from Next Gen. The D. Derodex class Warbird. That's going to be another fairly large one, but it is going to take some time to put together, and it's a pain, and the parts don't fit super great, and, like, the company, it, it's an old model kit from the 90s, the company that makes it isn't even around anymore, so, like, some of these parts are old and warped, and they're not, they're not the greatest thing to work with, so it wasn't proving to be a particularly enjoyable experience, uh, building that model, so I kind of stopped to focus on stuff that was more enjoyable because life's too short to not have fun. But I do need to go back and finish that at some point. That is that is one that I want to finish. Just because it's a cool cool ship. D. Derodax Warbird is one of my favorite sci-fi ships out there. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Okay. I need a little bit more on you before I'm happy to call you done. Oh, apparently a lot more because I missed your arm. Let's get that. Let's get that in there. Are we? Are we good? Perfect. Brush that up to get his head forehead cleaned up. Now let's get that cleaned up a little bit too. This is. Feather that around a little bit to mop up some of the pooled bits. Uh, see if I can clean up his head a tiny bit. There we go. That'll that'll do some good work. Perfect. <sighs> yeah, Venator Star Destroyers. That's awesome. Does it have a? Is the Venator the one that has the um? The hangar deck on the top that like slides open. I can't remember which which class of, of Clone Wars era uh, destroyer it was that had that. I always loved that. I thought that was a really cool idea for a for a ship. I was like, I think my most, like, in-depth amount of time spent with a Venator is the crashed Venator in um, Jedi Fallen Order. And uh, it's not in the best shape. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little difficult to tell what uh, which specific one that was supposed to be because it's kind of in pieces. Luker Hulk. Yeah, no, no, no. Luker Hulk's the... Uh, the, the 
Trade Federation? That's it. That's the name. I was like, I was about to say Techno Union. I was like, no, it's not the Techno Union. They're, they're a member of the Trade Federation, but that's not their ship. Their ship was the, uh, the weird ones. They had those, those... The weird ones that were launching off on the, the ground at, uh, Geonosis. Man. Now I want to play Battlefront. Endurance is the carrier vendor? That might be it, yep. I was like, you know the one I mean, right? Where it's got the, like... The slide top. Um... Where the, like, the, the, the middle panel kind of slides to either side to, like, launch the fighters. It's such a cool idea. I love that thing. Alright, get that all spread onto there. A little heavy on his face, but we can just mop some of that up. There we go, a little heavy on the foot. Soak some of that up. Get in on that arm. Get in on that rib cage. Got a little blotch on there. Whatever. Ah. <laughs> uh, who cares? We'll we'll paint we'll be painting that over with purple anyway. It is not gonna matter in the end. Want an actual good, like, modern Star Wars RTS game? Yeah. Kind of want to go play Empire at War one of these days. I've never actually, like, played through a campaign of that. I should give that another shot. I have it sitting on... on Steam. Uh... Are you good? Are you good? That appears to be... at least mostly painted. Yeah, that'll be fine. Please let Homeworld 3 be moddable. I... I mean... <laughs> there have been ongoing Star Wars mods for Homeworld 2 for, for years. Well, you know, good RTS modern takes would probably be modded Empire at War. Yeah. Ah, gosh. I'm getting all smudged up here. <laughs> That's okay. I'll wash my hands off in a minute anyway. Can I just, uh... Just paint that on there. Will that uh, maybe... Oh, okay. We're just staining my hands. That's fine. <laughs> it's a messy job painting sometimes. Let's get this guy going. This is a weird one. This is my, my musician. He's got this big horn. I'm assuming the horn I want to be metal. But, uh, Warhammer is battleship focused, hammering each other par- Oh god, no! <laughs> Parsecs away, god no. Warhammer is like, pull up right alongside you and broadside you from point blank range and or possibly ram into you. <laughs> it is! War Warhammer space battles are fucking brutal. <laughs> they are so- they are so over the top, much like everything in Warhammer. But no, yeah, they don't do the Parsecs away thing, they are like- get right up in your face and just pound you from from six inches away. And there's actually a really good blindsided mid battle prepared or not. Yeah, and there's gonna be crap flying out of the warp and, and they do like ship boarding by firing like a, an escape pod. It's like a, a, a kind of cylinder with like a drill on the front and they just like ram it into a ship and the drill like drills through the hull and they just pursed out inside of the ship. It's so, it's so cool. Um, there's actually a really good, um, Warhammer Space RTS, uh, in Battlefleet Gothic Armada and Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. They are Honestly, really, really good. And they actually have some fun lore, too. Uh, particularly Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. Has some really fun, like, lore stuff. So if you like your, your 40k... I think uh, Gothic 1 actually has some pretty good stuff, too. I think Gothic 1 was Fall of Cadia? Or is that Gothic 2? I don't remember. Whatever. Yeah, no, they're great. I... 
played a bit of Sins of a Solar Empire, but I didn't get into it as much because I actually like having a campaign. Like I, I like having my my plot and my story. All right. Keep painting through here. Keep getting this all dyed in. This guy's a bit of a pain. I should not have uh, left built him in one piece. Building him in one piece was a mistake, is what I've learned. Warcraft used to my favorite. Yeah, Warcraft and Starcraft were, were really pretty special for their their campaigns. Like they they brought a, brought a lot of story to the table. I'm okay with, like, the level of story in, like, um, like, Empire at War, and, uh, what was the other one? Age of Empires. Like, I'm fine with that, where it's just, like, kind of, like, a pre-mission brief, and then, like, a, a overarching campaign map that you're kind of progressing through. Fine with that. That's fine. Homefront was really good with that, too. Homefront had a, had a really, really solid story focus. Home world, not home front. <laughs> home front's a joke. <laughs> I was just thinking about home. I was thinking about home front because I, uh, I had a friend that was looking at uh, asking me the other day if I could help them figure out how to play. Um, what's the name of the shooter from back in the day? Time Splitters. Time Splitters Two. They wanted to play, and uh, playing it inside of home front is actually the easiest way to get it working. Okay. I think that's another one just about done. Do I want to clean up his brow a tiny bit there? Let's get a tiny bit more cleaned up. Perfect. That's about right. Get that all dyed in. Get the inside of that little hole in the back of his head nice and dark. Yeah, perfect. Oh yeah, Red Alert was super fun. Red Alert was super fun for sure. Uh, did you see they just uh, re-released all the old Red Alerts on Steam? Like, as the original versions. Not even like the, just the enhanced version. Just like they got all the original ones up on Steam. EA did like a big classic title drop. Oh god. I left this guy sitting here in this cardboard box to dry after I primed him. And he dried to the cardboard box. Oh dear. Well, that one's not moving. We'll come back to him. Should have picked him up and rotated him a little bit. That's okay. But yeah. There's a lot of good old RTSs to play. I think I picked up all those red alerts when they came out on Steam just because they were like two bucks a piece or something stupid like that. It was really, really cheap. I was like, ah, we'll just, just grab them all. Why not? Why not? I already have them all on, on EA Origin or whatever the hell they're calling their, their app these days, but like, might as well own it on Steam too, just so I have it in more than one place in case they vanish. Some of those old games, I'm just like, I will, I will own it as many times as you release it, just because... The original version stopped working, and now I'm paranoid that the new version will stop working one day, too. But like, just keep buying it so that hopefully I have a functional version of it somewhere at all points in time. Cardboard box is now a part of my miniature. That's true. That's what we'll do. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just I'm just basing. This is extreme basing. I have a two foot by one foot base on this miniature. <laughs> It's my it's my entire army's movement tray. That's that's the, the the trick. We just set the entire army in there and then shoved the whole cardboard box around. Totally intentional and planned. All right, get that all in there. Looking good. Get that on there. Yeah, another reason I wanted to do these painting streams is kind of show that, like, I get, a, I get a lot of people that compliment my miniatures, and I appreciate that. I don't think they're anything super fancy, but I do think they look decent. 
And I'm not what I would consider a, like, particularly high skill painter. So I kind of wanted to just show a painting stream just to be like, if somebody's interested in trying this hobby out, if they've been looking at miniatures and being like, man, these all look so good, but I'm never going to be able to get to that level. It is... You're, you're fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Any Anybody can paint a good looking miniature. You just got to take some time. Mod pack I'm playing his chocobos. That's cool. Do you have to do the ridiculous amount of like chocobo crossbreeding like you do in Final Fantasy 7? Oh, speaking of Final Fantasy 7, man, I am so, so looking forward to being able to eventually play Rebirth. I've been hearing nothing but good things. And I am very excited to be able to get my hands on a way to play that. Either when they bring it to PC or if I end up pick up a PS5 specifically to play Rebirth. We shall see. But that is on my radar. <laughs> As one that I'm very interested in. Um, do I need anything else on you? Let's get a little bit of a brush in there. Perfect. Common chocobos. This is going to make me spend hours to get that legendary chocobos. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't know that mod, but no, yeah. Yeah, no, you're going to have to. You're going to be there. That's that's just how chocobos work. That's half the fun of raising chocobos, is spending 20 hours resetting your game to get them to be the chocobo you want them to be. <laughs> you had me at chocobos. Eh, get you in there. That's okay. We've got four more to go. And then I have finished all of the bone on one whole squad of... Minus one that I did earlier, um, but one whole squad of 20 skeleton warriors. I have a second full squad of 20 skeleton warriors that I need to paint. And then um, all the archers, which is 32 archers and three chariots and 16 skeletal horse guys. Uh, eight of them are melee, eight of them are ranged, and then I've got to do the Necrolith Bone Dragon, and I've got to do a Tomb King on foot, and I've got to do Nagash, and I've got to do um, I've got to do oh god I've got to do Arcan the Black over here Because this guy is going to be getting... Because this guy is a rider, and I've got to paint that whole thing up and get that all going, which is going to be a whole process, as you can see. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch. I've got a lot of, a lot of miniatures to paint. Simple hunter party wishes to own his own, own chocobo friend. Ah, you got you got to you got to raise a whole family of chocobos and then crossbreed them. Yeah, the amount of chocobo breeding I had to do in Final Fantasy VII back in the day. Let me tell you, that was like half the end game was just banging chocobos together to see which which colors you could get. I do remember the trick back in the day was that you'd, uh, it was just like saving and resetting and opening the system tray, like the CD tray, to get it to, like, interrupt some of the, the sequences. Which obviously you can't do anymore, like I can't, I can't pop the CD tray on Steam. <laughs> I haven't heard if there's, um, a ridiculously overly complicated Chocobo breeding minigame in uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm curious to see if that's going to be the case. If they went that hardcore. I think it would be very funny if they did. Um, <laughs> just really make pl modern players just absolutely rage quit when you have to spend 40 hours to get an achievement to breed one chocobo. Oh gosh, there's way too much paint on this guy. Oh dear. 
getting all up in there. Let's just suck some of that out of there. There we go. Yeah, a little heavy, but we'll grab another one and we'll just work on another one real quick. Get this started. Once I've got some of that lead off of this brush, go back to you and real quick tidy up the bit that I thought looked a little too heavy and tidy up some of this. And spread some of that paint back over onto this guy. Simple solution. If I'm like, geez, I put a little too much on that guy, we'll just move it onto a different guy. Not a big deal at all. That guy will do just fine. Almost painted my screen again. Don't, don't paint the monitor. We're not. Painting skeletons, not monitors here. That's the that's the plan. Oh, I just realized you can just see the uh, little volume bar that I'm always talking about on the corner of the screen there. Like when I say sometimes certain apps will like block my volume bar where I can't actually see what the hell is going on. That's what I'm looking at. My only means of gauging whether or not the, the game audio and my mic audio are balanced to each other or not. It's not always the most reliable thing on the planet. <sighs> okay. No, let's rinse this off. The brush is getting a little clogged up here. Very good. Get a little bit more on there and finish this guy up. Two more to go after that. And I should have, yeah, I got about an hour to kill here after I finish this up. Well, about half an hour. What I'll probably do is I'll probably just end the stream and I'll make sure I can get Discord set up. Use one of those fancy ring light magnifying glasses. I don't use the ring light style. I will show you what I do use occasionally, though. Like, right now, I'm not using anything. This is just, obviously, I'm just smearing paint around, so I very much don't need to worry about fine detail. Um, but for some steps where it's like, okay, I really need to be able to see what the heck I'm doing here in a, in a larger amount. Like, when I was painting the face on Gilliman, there was, uh, there was an option... So that was that was going to require a bit more finesse than this, um, and the the thing I use for that I will pull up here in a second, sitting next to me on the floor where it belongs. Yeah, but I'm going to finish this up. I'll probably uh, end stream because I want to set up Discord for the Dark Soul stream. Like I might play a little bit of Fallout 76, but that's eh, fine. We'll save that for another time. Um, I want to make sure I can get Discord installed. Well, maybe I'll eat something or something real quick. Uh, oh, you'll do. Okay, that's good. Rinse off my brush again. I am pretty happy with how this little skeleton army is starting to look. They are—they are all looking like bone, which is good. And slightly dirty bone, which is what I wanted. Um, I have uh, a very, very dusty, because I kept it on the floor where it belongs. Um, no, I have a magnifying thing here. I'm just going to clean off some of the dust off the lenses. Um, that is like a, yeah, wear it like a pair of sunglasses. And it's got like a little, little magnifier thing in front of you. And there's actually a pack of um, different magnification um, lenses that you can like pop in and pop out here uh, to help. And I think there's also, I don't think I have a battery in this right now, but this little bit right here, well, it does do a battery in it. 
is a little light. So you can make sure your light is coming from straight in front of you, which can help a little bit. Yeah, I got a, I got a, this was like 10 bucks on Amazon. It was super cheap and it came with like six different magnification um, lenses so I can switch out my magnification as I need. But yeah, that's, that's what I use. I don't use the ring light, um, like look through magnifiers because I find those obscure too much of my vision and I don't like that. There we go. Got that one guy that was really stuck on there off. Let's get him done. That was kind of the trick with this is I was like, I don't know where I'm going to put the camera that, you're, <laughs> that you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing and that I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing because that's, that's kind of the trick is like I can't put the camera right in line with what I'm looking at because then I wouldn't be able to see. <laughs> and that would be a problem. So because it wouldn't have been so much of a problem for today when I'm just kind of like smashing some paint on there, but it'd be a problem for when I'm trying to do detail work. Whereas as it stands right now, I could definitely be doing detail work and you guys would be able to have this angle view, which I think works reasonably well. Like you can mostly see what I'm doing. I wouldn't mind rotating the camera like a little bit more like this way. If I could, we'll see. Uh, the incredibly efficient setup that I have right now for having my camera in the position that it's at, floating in the air to my right, left, to my left, that's it, uh, is I have one of those like boom mic stands and I've just lowered the mic stand down uh, and I'm on my headset mic. And I just taped the camera to the mic stand. <laughs> it's just a little webcam. It's one of those ones that's supposed to sit on top of your monitor. And I've, I've literally just got it like taped over the, the mounting bracket <laughs> to the mic stand. Very, very technical stuff here. It's okay. It seems to be working. It hasn't like slid off or shifted at all, I don't think. So that's all I need it to do is just kind of hold in one spot and stay there for the entire stream. And it's it's doing that. So that's good. Um are you about done there? Perfect. Okay. So that guy's a little tiny bit of a mold line, I think, on his head. But which can really stand out when you're doing washes. Uh, washes like to really catch out any mold lines or inconsistencies that you had. So you sometimes want to kind of watch that and you might need to wick away some ex excess paint that's trying to pick out your mold line. Not too bad, but it's fine. All right. One more to go and I have finished up uh, well, I painted 19 of these, and that took about an hour and 20 minutes. That's not too bad. And then we'll need to do another session where I go through and I paint all the... I'll probably do the metal first, I think. We'll go back and do all of the um, coppery bits that I want to do on these guys. Um, and we'll do that in one big stream where I just go through and I get some copper paint out and we just kind of start going to town. I have my paint picked out for that already. And we'll just, yeah, bash through a bunch of copper on a bunch of skeletons. And then we'll do one for the purple and we'll do one for the... <laughs> there's some leather that I need to do. So there's probably gonna be like a stream where I just come back and I do like a, a kind of touching up um, bits. Like, if I want to do any highlights, if I want to do any extra little colors, like, we'll do the, some of the, le like, leather straps for, like, armor panels and stuff like that. Um, so we can do the leather bits. There's not much of it, uh, so we'll do that as, like, its own. But, oh, see, this guy's got a nice thick mold line there on that head. Good. Good, good. 
that's okay we'll fix that we can just use my brush work it around a little bit and we will be able to get that hidden in there nice and easily when i'm painting i can work around that a little bit too why would you put the mold line right in his right in his noggin but i can fix that to the point where it'll be basically invisible without too much effort yes there we go and just wick a little bit of that away there you go that's that's pretty good we can paint around that too i can <laughs> some tricks you can do if you have like oh gosh there's a really awkward mold line in an odd in an odd spot on a model too is you can paint it in and make it look like battle damage I'll create a whooping cough in the state next to you. Good lord. I saw somebody the other day online, was uh, one of my content creators I follow, got scarlet fever. <laughs> it's just like, my god, like. Did I hop in a time machine? Like, how did you manage? Hope he's okay, but. It really was like a. I didn't even realize that was a thing you could get. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty much exactly my reaction. It was like, I'm sorry. What? To be fair, that was also his reaction. Was like, I'm sorry, I have what? Because he'd been saying for like a week or two that he was like, man, I've really been feeling under the weather, and it's been going around like the whole family had been passing, he's got, he's got, you know, wife and kids and stuff. Um, and he's talking about how like they've they've all been kind of passing this cough back and forth, um, and they thought it was just like a flu or something. And finally, after like the third time, he was like feeling worse again. He was like, okay, what the hell? And he went into an actual hospital and got it looked at. And they're like, oh yeah, I know you got, you got scarlet fever. Which yeah, isn't the end of the world, but it was just like, a, I can't believe that. All right, that was 19 skeletons. 19 skeletons painted up. Well, the skeleton bit of the skeletons painted up. I guess 19 skeletons is a fair fair assessment of that. Um, I'm going to, real quick... Uh, no, I'm not. I was going to say I'm going to save my camera settings here. I'll, I'll live dangerously. We'll figure it out again next time. It only took me like 20 minutes to get this set up. That's fine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Rearrange myself in my chair a bit here. But yeah, um, thanks for joining. It was great having everybody here to chat with and, you know, keep me company while I'm working on this, because I do have many, many skeletons to work on. For, for a comparison, in case I hadn't shown this at all, or you haven't seen what it is that I'm working on, uh, I bought the Warhammer the Old World Tomb Kings starter box thing. And let me pull that up here real quick on the old interwebs, so you can see what all I am assembling uh can i get one picture of all of them please that will do nicely open image and new tab uh and then if i go over to use and we say give me a screen capture please and then i hide you it is going to be this uh this this whole thing here so i've finished like one of these today I've got to do another one. I've got to do all of this. I've got to do these these horses here. I've got to do these chariots. I've got to do this dragon. I've got to do this tomb king. Uh, and that's it. And then in the rest of the set of stuff that I want to buy, I would like to um, get these guys when they become a thing. I want to get one of these when they're available. Um, I don't know which one of these I want to get. We'll take a look at both. It's one kit that builds either. I don't really need either of these. Um, I don't really want any of the Ashabdi guys. They're like the big skeletons, and I don't really care about them. Um, I could get this Tomb King, which is pretty similar to the Tomb King I've already got that comes with the, the box set, so I'm not that worried about that one. Um... I'm tempted to get him. So, like, yeah, there's these guys here. I think these look really cool. Although they can also come as, like, this version. 
where it's just like the the head I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll decide. We'll see which... I'll, I'll, you get all the pieces to build them in either option. Uh, I want to get one of these, because these look really cool in uh, Total War Warhammer 2. And I think I can probably paint mine up to look closer to the Warhammer 2 version of it. Um, do something fun with that. Um, I, was, I was a little let down with how this looks... Of the, the paint job they used. And then, you gotta get them. Because it, it's, it's the man. It's your boy. It is Cetra the Imperishable. He is like... The go-to skeleton, skeleton boy. And even though I'm, I'm painting my army more in the, like, army of Nagash colors, which would be the exact opposite of him, um, you gotta have Cetra. <laughs> Cetra's is one of the, you know, he's, he's Cetra. You gotta have Cetra if you're doing Tomb Kings. But yeah, that's, I think, the general gist of what we're gonna be doing. Again, thank you everybody for joining. I will post the social media links here. Um, I don't know how often I'm going to do these painting streams. Um, it'll probably be kind of just on a when I have time to and when I'm feeling up for it um, time schedule for now. Because uh, it does kind of just come down to like, when do I have a day that I'm not streaming anything else and I have time to, to fit it in there. I'll try to post about that on Twitter when it's when it's like, oh, this is looking like there might be a good day to do this. If I can fit like a once a week schedule in eventually, I might go to that. Um, start working on that a little bit more consistently. Um, other than that, let me close you out. I think in about an hour, a little under an hour, I'm going to be streaming some Dark Souls with Sir Techno Ghosty here. And yeah, I'll we'll just be working on that. And then I'll be doing uh, back to work. My, my, my vacation ends after today. Uh, so I'll be going back to work and then. Um, I'll probably start doing some more Xenoblade more regularly, try to finish through that. And once we finish Xenoblade, I don't really know what I want to do next, so I'll probably open that up to a poll, um, do a one-off or two in the middle of there, and then we'll put a poll up about what we want to do after that, uh, try to decide what the plans are at that point. But again, thank you all for joining. I will see you around maybe in an hour from now. Um, but for now, I'm going to go set up Discord, get everything ready to go for that. So I will let you all find your own way. I genuinely don't know which, which direction I would send a raid right now after a, a painting stream. But yeah, take care, and I will catch you all around.